There are no huge villains in the first season of the Walking Dead games, other than the stranger at the end. But the much more memorable would be in the second season, in the St. John Cannibal Brothers. They were set out to be playing to help our survivors, but when they began getting questioned by the survivors, their entire plan changed. They were good villains, but what made them the most memorable from the first game? This is the question we will be answering today. If you guys do enjoy this video, please let me know down below who else you want to see me make these videos on. I really enjoy making them, and I have a couple in the runway for it, but let's get into it. Prior to the apocalypse, the St. John family consisted of Brenda and Terry St. John, and their two sons, Andrew and Danny. Andrew was a university graduate, although his degree is unknown, and Danny used to play baseball, while Brenda and Terry ran the St. John Dairy. Danny always felt a bit overshadowed by Andrew since he went to university. However, Danny has said excelled in sports. I cannot find the clip, however, there is also a part of the game that suggests Danny could well have been a sex offender. Terry died to walkers at the beginning of the apocalypse after one snuck up on him behind the farmhouse, yet we never get to see this. The St. Johns have quite a cold personality. Danny comes across as secretive and a little bit eerie whenever he is talking to you. This is due to his low-pitched droning voice and his hunched over look. He is also quite merciless and will do anything to hide his family's secrets. When you find the strange woman in the forest and start to question her, just before she reveals the secrets of the cannibals, Danny will shoot her. Andrew on the other hand appears friendly and eager to help, create trade deals with other survivors. When he approaches the motel, he simply wants to borrow some petrol, and then he manipulates the group using their hunger to lure them back to the St. John Dairy to become a human kebab. Brenda comes across as a wholesome woman who is your typical amazing hostess, preparing a meal for the survivors and helping take care of the wounded Mark. She just wants to help the survivors. Or it seems this way. As the episode goes on, we see another side of each of these characters when they make their maniacal outbursts become much more prevalent. Danny becomes an even creepier version of himself. He shoots a woman point blank despite Lee attempting to talk her down. He expresses that he used to like the tree swing in the summer because of the little girls in the summer dresses. Danny is definitely the creepiest of the St. John family, but his personality does not particularly change after they all have the huge personality flip. Andrew loses his calm and rational personality and instead becomes paranoid and determined. He is desperate to kill and eat the survivors, and as such, he becomes paranoid that they could run away, escape, and then kill them all. And this shows when he approaches Danny while they are locked up in the meat locker. Brenda, on the other hand, completely snaps and loses it, but she is considerably more alert to what she is doing than Andrew and Danny are. When she kidnaps Katia, she does not want to kill Lee or kill Katia, and when she is backing up, it seems she is not used to doing the gorier aspects of cannibalism, but that would normally fall upon Danny and Andrew, in her reluctance to just kill Katia. The St. John Cannibals have such a broad impact on the second episode. They're introduced when they approach the motel looking for petrol in for their generator. When they do this, the group offers them petrol in exchange for food, as they are obviously starving to death at this point. The St. John brothers agree, and they head towards the dairy farm. While on the way, they come across some survivors, which are from the save lots near the motel, who have become a radical survival group who received food from the St. John dairy. The St. John brothers insist that they will be fine as long as they do not interact with the survivors. They move along and and eventually they reach the farm. When they reach the farm, we meet Andy and Danny's mother, Brenda, who offers to cook them a nice meal, as they have been starving for so long. While they do this, Lee and Mark have been asked to go and check on the fence, which surrounds the dairy farm, since it is an electric fence, which walkers will burn up on. However, when they jump over to pull the fence back up, it turns back on, and Lee and Mark get ambushed by the Save Lots bandits, who start firing arrows at them, one of which hits Mark in the shoulder. They manage to survive the ambush, but Mark needs medical attention. They head back to the farm and Lee tells the St. John brothers of the attack by the Save Lots bandits, and Brenda takes Mark in to tend to his wound from the arrow in his shoulder. While all this unfolds, Danny and Lee devise a plan to get revenge and take out some of the bandits. However, this plan backfires when they encounter Jolene, who threatens them. She starts to say that they know who Danny is, that she knows who Danny is and what his family does. But before she can tell the whole story to Lee, Danny shoots her. Danny even mumbles, what a waste, which could be him suggesting it was waste of meat as opposed to waste of a person's life. They return to the farm and here Lee 
can actually have a conversation with Danny, but he will be reveling in his kill. Lee will find him stroking his gun, which he named Charlotte, which Lee is disturbed by. Lee can also confront Danny about a wheelbarrow that is filled with old, worn clothes that he states are his after he badly cut himself, but he does not appear to be wounded or scarred, leading to even more suspicion from Lee. It's dinner time. Before they all go sit down, Lee excuses himself after becoming suspicious of the St. John's. He goes to investigate the second floor and find Mark's, finds Mark in a hidden room behind a bookcase with his legs cut off, with Mark saying, don't eat the meat. Lee runs down the stairs and has to try and stop Clementine from eating the meat. This is where the St. John's switch on the survivors, take them hostage and knock Lee out. Some of the survivors are locked into a meat locker. Lee, Kenny, Lily, Clementine, and Larry. This is where Larry has a heart attack, which sees him get killed. This is the event that changes Lily history. And when Kenny and potentially Lee make the choice to kill Larry so he doesn't reanimate, Lily completely snaps. However, after this, they do manage to escape with Clementine climbing out of a vent. Lee and Kenny are the first to escape the meat locker, and they slowly sneak up on Danny, who is the one deciding to keep the survivors alive. Andy comes to up to them and tells Danny to kill the remainder of the survivors, so Kenny and Lee hide in a stable stall and slowly approach Danny. This is when the stable door opens and Danny is already there pointing the gun at you. Lee jumps to hold the shot and they start to fight. Danny has the upper hand, but either Lily or Kenny will come to your aid, and Danny falls into the bear trap where you get the choice to either kill Danny or spare him. Either way, it's likely that he would have died when the walkers attacked the farm. Then Lee goes to save Katya from Brenda, in what was the part that severely pissed off my deathless run of this game. You have to be very careful with movement and wording you use when you approach Brenda, as she will just shoot you if you don't use the right words or you move too fast. Eventually, however, Brenda will back up into Mark on the stairs, and she will get chomped and scream out letting Cartier get free. Outside the house, Lee finds Andy, who has duck. Andy shoots Kenny, which causes Lee to throw himself at Andy, and they get into a fist fight, with Lee's face nearly getting fried by the electric fence, although this eventually fizzles out. Lee gets the upper hand and proceeds to beat up Andy, and he even has the opportunity to kill Andy from this, or reach the point where Doug slash Carly will step in to stop you. You can walk away from Andy and join the group, or you can kill him and then walk on. The motel survivors then leave the farm and presumably leave the St. John brothers to die. Because, like, with the walking dead, if there's walkers storming a farm, they're dead. The farmers are gone. There are no massive easter eggs or facts to the St. John family. However, one is that the St. Johns are the only knowingly cannibalistic group within the Walking Dead video game. However, they did trick the Save Lots bandits and several of the motel survivors into eating human flesh. Danny is the first antagonist that Lee can actually get killed in the game series. Players also have more of a desire to kill Danny as opposed to Andy, with 55% of players opting to kill Danny, whereas 80% of players opted to spare Andy. The St. John family are evil. They are considerably darker than the stranger at the end of the game, and they're probably better than the Terminus Cannibals in terms of how active they are with eating human meat. The Terminus Cannibals only ever eat one person on camera, whereas we see Mark get to chomped, and we also see evidence of other people who have been eaten. I just find the St. John's considerably more creepy than the Terminus Cannibals, but that's just my opinion. Let me know yours down below. Also, while you are down there, have a look at that shiny big red button and subscribe, as it helps out a lot. But also, let me know what other characters you want me to make these videos on. It's going to take ages for me to get all through all the characters I want to, but I'm trying to buff up my upload schedule to do this. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.